I would um, want to just thank you for having us here, uh, welcoming us to Abia. How far has it been since you became the governor of the state? Well, it's a pleasure having you in Abia. I feel excited that you found time yeah. to travel from far to come to Abia to see things for yourself. Yeah. That is how it should be. Well, it has been ups and downs that you have in governance. Today is good. One challenge or the other, and you facing the challenge and overcoming the challenge. So it has been a nice experience. Yeah. Well, the, the first thing that comes to my mind is you're one of the very first politician that rebelled against the Godfather. Did that in any way inhibit your ability to deliver the promises at certain period? Of course, of course. You see, there are some people when you ask them, they say God is their Godfather. Mm. Uh, when you have God as your Godfather, uh, that is good. Uh, but when you don't have a Godfather who behaves like a Godfather, if you believe in that, then you are in for trouble. Mm. Uh, my own idea of Godfatherism, which is everywhere, it is in academics, it is everywhere, is that you now guide somebody, tutor the person yeah. to a starting stage, get committed with the person and make sure that that person does things that are very good. Yeah. You don't dominate the person, you don't intimidate him, you don't expect him to take dictates from you, whether it is good or bad. That is a bad aspect of Godfatherism. Yeah. I don't know if you've heard this rumor. People still feel yourself, your wife, and your son are actually in control of the state. How would you react to that? Well, uh, you see, you must have detractors in government. And people who are saying this are the real detractors of this government. There's no basis for comparison at all between my family and the family of my predecessor. No basis for comparison. We have different ideas, different ideologies, different trainings, different backgrounds, different antecedents. You see, mine is different from his own. He has done his bit, and we expect that once you are in governance, you have done your bit, and somebody comes up, allow that person to, do, to use his God-given talents yeah. to try his best and make his impact. So you completely deny that your son and your wife are in control of this government? Of course. You are here in Abia, go and ask yeah. questions. Rather, my son and my wife are doing everything possible to move Abia to the next level. One of the impressions I get from most of the projects is as if Abia was left in darkness for eight years and you are meant to start from the scratch. If you compare your state to other states, would you say that those eight years seems to be the eight years wasted and you're just trying to catch up with neighboring states? You have said it all. You have said it all because you've been here before. And now, fortunately, that's why I say I thank you for coming. Fortunately, you have come to Abia. It's not here, say. You didn't send your staff. You didn't send any person. You didn't send any emissary. You are here yourself. And you are now seeing, you are in a position to compare and contrast what you saw then and what you saw now. And you will see that the difference is very, very clear. One of your projects that I, I saw was giving tax, the youth empowerment program, right. giving taxes to uh, unemployed youths. And I don't know the numbers, but when I asked, he said they were given free of charge. Right. My question is, why should a government give freebies? I mean, where will the money come from, give taxes to young unemployed people, and they are not expected to pay anything back into government? Some would just say that's a waste of resources. It's not a waste of resources. It's, it's government money going back to the people. Some work will have used that money to do something else. What was the yeah, idea I behind that? My idea behind that was to get our youth empowered, to find the means, easy means of livelihood, genuine means of livelihood. What is the situation in terms of kidnapping and insecurity in Abia State today? Before now, you couldn't have come here. You wouldn't come here. You'd be afraid to come here. Yeah. But I'm sure you have come. You have stayed for one or two days. No person has molested mm -hmm. you. So there was a time Abia was bad, bad in terms of kidnapping. 
And that scared away people like you, scared away investors. But we faced the challenge. That is why. That is the essence of governance. Yeah. Today, Abia is very safe. You don't hear of kidnapping again. Neither do you hear of armed robbery. People are safe. Investors are coming. People like you are now coming to, uh, to, to ask questions and to see developments that, that are on ground. There's, there's one challenge, though. The state of Abia, the, is it the market in Abia, it's a major challenge to every government before you. Mm. And there's a, there's a serious complaint by people that that is one area you have not done so well in terms of the, about the market, Araria market, Araria market mm. and the, the waterlog area of a population and congestion. Do you think there is hope before you complete your time in office? I would like you to visit that place also before you make your real assessment. Yeah. I know the position of situation of Ariara market before I took over. The roads were impassable, the whole place was flooded, yeah. environmental sanitation was nothing to write yeah. home about. Yeah. But if you go to Ariaria today, you see that we have built the roads. The traders are happy. We went into partnership with the traders. We brought them, gave them money. This is not a question of government. We gave them broadly, the traders organized them, gave them money, brought contractors, and tell, look, supervise the contractors to do, to do the job for you. They did their roads. The, so, we so now also brought, brought our sanitation people, ASEPA, mm -hmm. equipped them, gave them money, gave them equipment. Mm -hmm. We result that if you go to Abba today, all those garbages that used to litter the streets here and there, you can't see them. Now, our, the Southeast governors... I mean, in Southwest, you have regional cooperation yes. with the importance of ABA as a major trading post in right. the African continent. Right. Uh, would you look into joining hands with your other Southeast governors to see that as a major point, focus point where there could be cooperation to uplift the standard of that place, just li like Onisha? We are doing that, but we've just started. If there was a foundation laid before now, yeah. if we made a foundation on this issue you are talking about, we could have gone fast. We could have gone further than, than what we, where we are. But we are just starting. Mm. The crop of Southeast governors that you have now are focused. We discussed also about products, like, farm, uh, like palm products, palm product, yeah. things we produce. Uh -huh. We discussed also about infrastructure, yeah. because these things have to be on ground. So true. there's something like that that is happening now. We are not, we are not resting. We are not sleeping. You right? did suck some non abians from yes. the civil service. Yes. Uh, I know, of course, there are also governors in the southeast who did the same. Sure. What's the situation now? The situation is that they are, they are back. Okay. They're coming back. I've told them to come back. But you see, that what brought back about that was circumstance. It was. What cost it, actually, was the minimum wage okay. bill that came up that time and made it compulsory that workers should be paid 18,000 minimum wage. I mean, you see, our problem is people are not realistic. Yeah. When I came home and looked at the whole situation, I saw that this state with our economy, with our income, both from FAC and IGR, mm. we cannot pay that minimum, minimum wage. wage. I was started looking for solutions, how to overcome it. And we discovered that this, what we did now, like, you know, we didn't sack them, we, we, we posted them, we said, go back go to back. your state. Yeah. <laughs> was done some years back mm -hmm. by, by our neighboring neighbor states, state. our sister states. They sent back our people. Mm -hmm. We took them, redeployed them in our service. Mm -hmm. Most of them are, are still there. Some have uh, retired. We said, okay, since it was done and it worked out for this, our, our brothers and sisters, we were the only state that didn't do that. Let us try it now because if I go, yeah. By that minimum, I, can, I will be having industrial unrest every, every day. day. And I looked at the statistics in the service and discovered that three quarters of the people in the service were non ambience Were non ambience And, you know, fuck allocation is done on state basis. Yeah. I said, okay, what will happen is I'm not sacking any person. Let me now transfer them to their states for just like they did to us. Yeah. Did and you contact the governor? Of course I did. I wrote them letters. I didn't get any reply from any of them. I told, them, I told them my predicament. Yeah. And why I said that was for them to give me ideas okay. on how to solve the situation. So when I did this, the whole world ran amok. Yeah. They started criticizing. Even those who, whom I told, yeah. eh, who didn't do anything, mm. started criticizing me. But the situation is back to... Yes. 
so we we now what would you gain from that one i never had any industrial unrest in this state even when all the states in the southeast went on strike because of this minimum wage mm. i didn't notice it here because i did it in consonance it's what it, it wasn't a personal uh, a personal uh, opinion or personal uh, action the i consulted the civil service consulted the labor leaders mm. they said do this thing because it was done before the another advantage of it is that we are paying, mm. Abia State is paying the highest minimum wage in Nigeria. Right now. 20,100. 20, Check it out. Uh, now, let me ask you. Um, and we have paid arrears. Are you owing external debt? Are you taking up, how much is no, no, Abia no, no, owing? No, 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 we are not owing. We are not Even with the owing, projects. If you are owing, if we are owing is external debts that was owed before, before I came here. Yes. So I am paying the highest minimum wage here, and I paid arrears. There are some states that have not started paying mm -hmm. minimum wage. I have paid arrears for one year. I paid it off. So that was what we gained from that. Mm -hmm. And now we've been working very, very diligently since then to make sure that our IGR comes up, because that's our salvation right now. Yeah. And the, the thing is gradually coming up. And we said... I think the best thing is this, since we are getting mm. IGR, yeah. is to call back these our brothers and sisters from their states. We didn't sack them. Yeah. We didn't sack them. We just were redeployed. Yes. Take, yeah, take, uh, you know, uh, uh, take them back in your service. So we said, okay, we agreed. Mm. And now sent out letters and this and they are all coming back. Mm. But my, 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 my puzzle is this, because that time they were accusing me of many, many things. Mm. Why didn't their governments take them. take them that time? Some of them are still not doing anything. When it happened to us, we deployed our, our people, send them back to the service. Mm. By 2015, you would have completed eight years. Right. Are you grooming a successor? How can I groom a successor? I'm not grooming any person. Did any person groom me? Any person, if other people... They are the people who decide. It's not me that will decide yeah. who will govern Abia. It is the people. Power belongs to the people. They know every person. So what? when the aspirants come, they will vote they for vote somebody for. They, of their choice. One, day, one thing that strikes me about you is that you don't have a political background. Uh, I, I was made to understand you were not a businessman. At all. You were in the civil service. Right. How did that happen? Someone straight from the civil service into government that i wasn't in active politics doesn't mean that i didn't come into contact with politicians yeah. that i wasn't in the system where politics was decided my civil service career after my university after my nyc i went straight to the civil service and in the course of my job as a civil servant i came into contact with a lot of people politicians and civil servants I was also instrumental to offices. I worked in offices that decided politics and politicians. So that exposed me very well. And then when eventually, when democracy came back in 1999, 1999 yeah. when I came back to Government House here, from there I became principal secretary, yeah. a chief of staff. That now opened my eyes. I came into contact with a lot of people yeah. whom I helped, who appreciated me, who came with their problems to me, and I touched their lives. Yeah. What? And they started pushing, saying, this man, this is the man, the right man that should be there. So that's how I started. What, what is your relationship with the current president, President Goodluck, Jonathan? Good relationship. A relationship is very cordial. He is the president. I'm a governor. So we relate very well. So you're not a sympathizer of the new PDP, now <laughs> part of the APC? <laughs> it's nothing like new PDP. If you're not in PDP, yeah, maybe you're in APC. We have one PDP. I am a staunch member of my party. I'm a party loyalist. So you party politics. So will you support the re-election of the president in 2015? Why shouldn't I? Is the president not entitled 
He so, gave his word that he would just run for one term. Oh, where did he give? Were you there when he gave the word? If you read words? President Obasanjo's just letters, the were you there when he gave the words? Were you there? Were you there? You were a very important member of the party, and yeah. you, at, you you should have inside knowledge. Did he or did he not give his word? I don't know. I don't know. I don't talk what I don't know. I don't tell you what I don't know. What I tell you is what I know very well. So I don't know about that. Okay, if we but look all I know is that if the president wants to run, run. he's entitled to run. If he declares his interest, yeah. for sure, Abia State will support him. We have supported him before. We we'll support him. In the Igbo, are they, they are victims of violence, especially in the northern part of the country mm. and other parts. And one would expect more agitation from the southeastern governors on the fate of Igbos that are being killed in other parts of the country. I mean, compel the president to do more in terms of protecting Igbos in other parts of the country. But the president is, the president is trying. He's president of uh, Nigeria. Yeah. He's not president of Ndibo. And he's not the person who is killing the people, killing Igbos in the north. And it is not only those that are dying in the north. Mm -hmm. Other people are dying. So what he's doing is to protect every person. I would want to go to your projects now. <laughs> Let us talk about the e-library. Right. What is the idea behind the e-library? The idea behind the e-library is to have a modern library that is compliant of technology. We have, we have an old library here. And we are moving forward. Okay. So, every year we go now, is, the technology has advanced. Okay. Therefore, that should be on ground. So, I'm building a new one, e-library, for, for, for our people in a serene environment. And, and let's talk about the conference cent center. Right. It's, it's quite big. How will that affect the common man on the streets? Why do we need a big conference center in Abia? Ah, we, you, when, you are, when you are spreading dividends of democracy, you spread it across board for common man, mm. for the elite, for the middle man, yeah. for every category of person. Mm. And now one will affect every person. If you're asking me how it's going to affect common man, mm. the revenue will realize from there. We reach the common man. That's by people visiting Abia. Exactly. But that is a world-class international conference mm. center. If you have gone there, yeah, been there, the building is solid. It has a capacity to sit 5,000 and above, mm. quite unlike what we had before. The one we have there is 500. Some of the federal roads seems to have been abandoned. Uh, not every one of them, but quite a number of the federal roads. Mm. And you've done quite a number of roads, you know, at least in the city. How would you get the federal government to take to their responsibility of fixing federal roads in Abia? If I have money, I will repair them. Because they are being used by my people and by our people. If I repair them, then I will go to federal government and say, I have repaired your road. Will you pay me back? If they pay me, I will take. If they don't pay me, I will insist. But I have to agree with them first of all. By so doing... I am helping the federal government. Mm. While the federal government also is doing other roads that are in my state that are also critical. In healthcare, you know, you, 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 there's the issue of the dialysis center. Is that just going to be the one we're going to have in, in, in Abia? Or is it going to spread across the state? Yes, yeah, it's going to spread across. Yeah, we have one in uh, Abbas. Yeah. Abbas. Uh, you, have, you talked about the dialysis center. Yes, we have a dialysis center in Omaha. We have in Aba with, with the latest equipment. Later, we have six six machines here, yeah. brand new ones. Two is for people that are, have normal normal blood. The other two for people who have hepatitis and HIV AIDS. We have it here in Omaha. We have in Aba. We have done so well in health that the Nigerian Medical Association came here and gave us a pass mark mm. for internship for doctors. So that our children who have just come out from the university want to do one year housemanship, mm. yeah, they are free to come here. We have admitted 21 initial foundational students, mm. 21 of them, they are there right now. In the next one year, they will move out and another 21 will come, or more than that. Mm. 
there was the original market in the center of the city. And anytime you approach Abia, that is the first site you get with traffic grid load. That is disappeared. You've moved them to a new site. Sure. And I know that that market is as old as Abia. How were you able to achieve that? And why did you just displace people from the center of town? Even though they've got a modern market, mm. don't they have an historical connection? No, no, no. I didn't displace them. I found them an alternative place. I didn't displace any person. No person will tell you that I displaced him. That market is as old, is older than you. Yeah. That market was built because of the, we call it railway market. Because the railway passes through Omaha. That market came up there for palm produce and uh, uh, cattle. It was servicing other areas. And it has been there for a very long time, since 1935. Governments have tried to relocate that market to another place to drive away the traders. They refused. But I came during the elections. I told them, if I win, if you vote me as your governor, I will move this market to another place. You told the traders. Though. Yes, of course, I said it. It's an election promise. And when eventually I won, because if they didn't like that policy, they will not vote for me. When I won. The government built it, built all stalls there. Before this market in town was about uh, 4,000 stalls there. But in Uban we have 7,000 stalls. And we made it very, very cheap, affordable to traders. We said, now, if you, if you, if you own the stall, you pay a total of 400 to own one stall mm -hmm. in the new place. Mm -hmm. If you, you never own at all, you pay only 500. So it's a very cheap cheap, cheap thing for them to do. And in that market, it's precious, there's security, there's water, there's light, there's hospital, there's, I mean, and a housing estate is developing very close to the market. I'm expanding the road, and I'm building another access road how from you, the village. How do you overcome the transportation problem from the... I, I provided buses, air-conditioned buses, to carry the traders from town because mm -hmm. I know that will be their problem. Yeah. From town to the market and back at a very reduced price. And because of that, people are rushing. The stores are exhausted. The stalls are all exhausted. And traders are coming and they can't find. Because some of them ran away that time. Some, they thought uh, we were playing. They didn't take government serious. Mm -hmm. You know, government thing, they say, ah, <laughs> they, we won't achieve that. But when it became reality, they're all rushing and they are now complaining. Mm -hmm. They don't have stores. And I said, well, we'll give you stores because we'll go and meet the villagers and acquire more land because they are still empty land. Acquire more land and build so that you stay there and do your business. You've got AIM by the Premiership. And I think there's another club from Abia State. Uh, Abia Warriors. It's Abia Warriors. Mm -hmm. you know? And is that not selfish on the part of Abia State? You know? I mean, two Premiership Football Club. You're not going to leave any for him or or, or any good Rangers. I mean, I just want to lead you on to sports. You know, yes. your, your program, your sporting programs. You know, apart from football, what other areas in sports? Well, we're doing very well, very well in foot. You know, football. We have Enyimba Football Club. We have the Warriors. We have the Comets. About Abia Warriors, are, and it's not easy to run one football club. Yeah. Not to talk of time. And people are trying to neglect that. And the Nimba has done very, very well. They are winning cups and cups. They are the current champion in terms of FA. They are the current champion. And the, the other, the Warriors also have advanced into uh, yes, Premiership. It's not easy. It's not easy. Apart from that, our boys are making waves during the Para Olympics. Olympics. Disabled boys, made mm. matters. Yeah, when you talk about disabled, I notice a lot of your facilities you make provisions for disabled. They all come with disabled access, okay. and that I hardly say well done to people in government. But I think that was a very good thing to think of. That for every public building, there must be a disabled access. You know, and what what broader idea? You know, because we do neglect that in Nigeria, we just think put a grandiose 
uh, building and that's it. But you went a step further, every facility there must be disabled access. Yes, thank you brother for appreciating that. You see and you talk, you say it the way it is. I want to thank you. Yes, that's it. They are part and parcel of our society. They are important. It's only that they are unfortunate to be disabled. And therefore, those of us who are able, it is our responsibility to cater, to cater for them, provide for them. That's what we are doing. Where you live, in the UK, you are in diaspora. That is what happens. Yeah. They provide for them. So all of all, we go outside also and see all these things. Mm -hmm. And we have to come here and replicate that. Governor, what would be your message to Abians and Nigerians in diaspora who want to come and invest in Abia? That has been my clarion call to all of them. Please come to Abia and invest first. Abia is safe. Before, when you go and tell them to come, they'll tell you, ah, security, security. But now, Abia is very, very safe. So come. And I didn't blame them that time because you cannot invest in the midst of insecurity. But right now that Abia is secured, your investment is safe. So come and invest. And Abia will partner with you. Partner with you very well to remove all those bottlenecks that will make investment uh, difficult. So the doors of investment in Abia are free, open for people like you also.